Hello, my name is Leona Herzog and until recently I have been the director and curator at the Bueller Gallery in St. Boniface Hospital. The Bueller Gallery is a place of hope, healing and contemplation for staff, patients, their families and the general public. It is also the mainstay of St. Boniface Hospital's Healing Through the Arts program. Today I would like to give you a tour of the current show, Out of the Ordinary, featuring the work of artists David McMillan and Keith Oliver. Today we will look at how we perceive everyday objects. Both artists take the familiar and make it extraordinary. First we will turn to the work of David McMillan. Starting in 1994, David spent about 25 years visiting Pripyat, Ukraine, photographing the aftermath of the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear plant. Then, after a 35-year hiatus, he again started to paint, and the works in this show were done over a period of about 10 years. When we think of portraits, we often think of paintings of the rich and famous, kings, queens, politicians, the doge in Venice. However, artists also painted their friends. Paul Gauguin painted Vincent van Gogh, and Vincent van Gogh painted his postman, and it is in this vein that David's paintings are done. I began my career as a painter, but in the 1970s I was given the opportunity to start a photography program at the University of Manitoba's School of Art. After a few years I became less interested in the paintings I was doing and more interested in photography, especially when I started using color film, which wasn't very common then in the 1970s. It wasn't until 35 years later that I began painting again after I retired from the university. Since it had been so long since I last painted, I wasn't sure what the work would look like, but after several false starts, I realized painting people was what I wanted to do. Historically, the demand for painted portraits dropped off after the invention of photography, and I admired portrait photographers, especially August Sander, but I was never satisfied with my own portrait photographs. However, the paintings I started to do felt altogether different. For one thing, they're a different species of object, a handmade image. I work from photographs, sometimes collaging several to get the image I want. I found that a certain scale close to life size worked the best for me. I ask people I know to pose, although in some cases we've barely met. I use artificial lights for the photographs and try some standing and some seated poses, usually 30 to 50 variations. The virtue of a photograph is I can choose from a variety of poses, often something very spontaneous or fleeting. I then decide how much of the figure to include. This is sometimes a consequence of how the sitter is dressed. I then try to get a combination of things that I find interesting to work together, from expressions to posture. This can mean using a face from one exposure and using yet another exposure for the figure. In the end, I want something dramatic. I think having worked in color as a photographer for so many years has helped develop my sensitivity to it in the second phase of my painting career. My biggest challenge has been finding people I'd like to paint. What makes a sitter work for me is somewhat indefinable, but it involves the combination of their physiognomy and clothing and their general physical presence. There are at least two dozen paintings of people in this exhibition, and I must have more than that, that I started over the same period of time, which are less interesting for me. The distinctions are very small, but sometimes the right elements come together in a way I know is going to add up. The still life paintings, the floors, were influenced by the photographic work I was doing in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Uh, over a number of years, I, I visited the area 22 times, photographing the aftermath of the 1986 accident. I ended up with many photographs of objects on floors that I found in hospitals, stores, and schoolrooms. These were remnants of the evacuated population and reflected the Soviet culture. The photographs were very interesting to make. Without the horizon line so central to most photography, giving a kind of compositional freedom. For the paintings, I took objects that I had available to me that were more representative of a North American culture, albeit somewhat idiosyncratic. 
The separation of art and craft, as we might think of it today, is a fairly new concept. Before the period of renowned Renaissance artists, the concept of an individual artist barely existed. Whether someone was a painter, woodworker, glassblower, potter, or lace maker in early modern Europe, traditional training took place in workshops that were very similar. Things began to change around the turn of the 15th century when people started to draw a distinction between art and craft. During the 20th century, the boundaries between art and craft changed again. The Bauhaus, a revolutionary school of art, architecture and design, started by Walter Gropius in Germany in 1919, changed the way students interacted with their teachers. Architecture, performing arts, design and applied arts were given as much weight as fine art. Today, contemporary artists use traditional materials and processes associated with craft practices, and contemporary art continues to make room for and popularize handmaking, decoration, and materiality. Keith Oliver is one of those artists. He has been a mainstay of the Winnipeg arts community for well over 40 years, and is respected as an artist, craft person, and mentor to the arts community. His work can be described as art, sculpture, and craft. Exquisitely made pieces combine technical mastery with artistic excellence, all while projecting a joyful quirkiness that make the viewer want to get closer to them and maybe touch them. Speaking of quirkiness, let's look at some of his works more closely. There are always surprises in the way Oliver uses his materials. He employs a considerable variety in his work, including beautifully grained wood such as maple, walnut, cherry and mahogany, or recycled wood complete with rusted nail holes. Layers of corrugated cardboard are grafted together making a solid new material that can be worked on a lathe in the manner of wood but produces a texture that is entirely different. Thick sliced branches are grafted together side by side so that their growth rings form a series of softly banded patterns on the vessel's surface. Oliver's forms are always interesting and frequently enchanting. Delicate wooden bowls are held aloft with ballerina legs on point that make them appear weightless. A colander with a delicious red interior has several legs ensuring it will not topple even if all the legs don't reach the ground. A beautifully grained lidded container is dotted with cheeky little wooden acorns. They are made individually, look very similar, but each is unique. Separately and together, the little acorns are a visual as well as tactile treat. There are also whimsical whirly gigs that resemble people. The finely crafted pieces, made with a variety of meticulously assembled woods, are constructed in a way that evokes a very human response. We are seeing things that are not really there. A sense of pareidolia. Ambiguous visual patterns are working together to create a sense of order and meaning where likely none was intended, and the pieces are all the more charming for it. He brings the object to the level of art through thoughtful design and impeccable technique. Oliver's work is indeed flouting convention. Keith Oliver and David McMillan invite us to take a deeper look at the world around us and reimagine it in a way that strays from convention, deviates from expectation. They elevate the ordinary, the people around us, and the utilitarian objects we use in daily life to star status through vision, mastery of materials, and uncompromising aesthetic standards. Each piece invites us to spend more time with it, to enjoy it at a leisurely pace, and recognize how out of the ordinary it really is. Thank you very much for joining me on this tour of Out of the Ordinary with artists David McMillan and Keith Oliver. I hope you will come to the gallery to see the show. It's quite likely you will find someone here that you know, just like I did at lunch last week when I ran into my old friend and artist, Steve Guthrow. <laughs>